You made it. Congratulations. taught in the city schools for many years and uh, would take my students on field trips and uh, I know it's really a challenge to get you here um, but I'm really happy that you're here and it's wonderful to see um, your faces. I'd like to thank the Japan Society for having us here, uh, Jeffrey Miller and Kazuko Minamoto. Uh, thank you. Kathleen Sullivan, who, while we were, were waiting for the, the second two schools, who gave a little interactive um, introduction. She's uh, a wonderful filmmaker and writer. She wrote, a, she wrote a book called Action for Disarmament, Ten Things You Can Do, which I highly recommend for your schools. And The Ultimate Wish, Ending the Nuclear Age, is a wonderful film for your schools. She's sitting up in the back there, working away, so I'd like to... <laughs> And I'd like to thank your teachers, because without your teachers, nothing would happen. And I know it takes special effort for um, these kinds of things to happen. And so here's a great teacher. As Jeffrey uh, said, uh, you will be hearing from uh, Clifton Truman Daniel, the grandson of US President Harry S. Truman. And I really want to take my hat off to Clifton. Um, he is very brave to, to straddle these two worlds of, of stepping across uh, enemy lines in a certain sense, or what were enemy lines, and standing up for uh, what he believes. And I think that his grandfather would be very proud of him, because his grandfather, after he saw what the bombs were, and there was a third bomb, he said, we cannot kill any more children. So, uh, we're very happy to have you here today. Also, Setsuko Thurlow, uh, it's been my great pleasure to know her over the last seven years. She was here with our very first programs in October of 2008, or 2000 and whatever, seven, eight years ago, was seven and a half years ago. And uh, I've grown to really love and admire her. She's incredibly strong, and if there's anyone in the world who speaks truth to power, I, I take power to lunch. Some people speak truth to power. She speaks truth to power. So uh, she's, and she is nominated by the, uh, it's a peace organization in Geneva, Switzerland, for the Nobel Peace Prize for 2015. And this organization has nominated 15 previous recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize. So it's my great honor to have Setsuko Thurlow here. And oddly enough, I know Yasuaki Yamashita from Mexico. I go to a place in Mexico every year, and I was told that there was a person there who survived the atomic bomb that I might want to, to meet, because um, it's a small world. And so I met him, he's a, he's a magnificent artist, he makes ceramics and paintings, and he is, has a poetic soul, and he survived the atomic bombings of, of Nagasaki, and I'm really proud and happy to have him as a dear friend. You know, we teach in schools, we teach, I taught English and, and reading and writing, but really, really, really taught was how you become a, a full human being. In the reading and the writing was the way that I would interact with you and was giving you tools to live in the world. But what I really wanted to teach you was how rich and full you are within yourselves. Uh, I wanted you to learn about the community around you, to engage yourself in the community around you, and to really respect the world and the earth upon which we live. And so today we're going to be learning uh, some about uh, Japanese and American history and relations. We're going to be learning about the nuclear bomb and what, what that is. But we're also going to be learning about how we as individuals can change and transform ourselves. And the transformation that we've seen from these people from uh, in their lives is, is really, I think, a really important lesson that we're going to learn today. 
weapons. What is unique about nuclear weapons? Why are nuclear weapons so incredibly terrible? What is it that no other weapons ever had? Radiation. And what makes radiation such a terrible, there we go. What makes radiation so particularly terrible? It causes diseases such as leukemia. It causes diseases. Um, it, it, just to the people who are living, or can it continue? It, it can also continue. It can cause genetic mutations. And the, the radioactive materials that nuclear weapons have um, exist in the Earth for the half-life of plutonium is 24,000 years. It does not disappear from the planet entirely for 240,000 years. So for all of that time, you can sweep it away, but it just goes over there. It doesn't disappear. When we clean our house, we don't have any more dust. When we clean plutonium, it goes somewhere else. So it doesn't disappear. And this is what's so uniquely terrible about nuclear weapons. Not only their firepower, they cause hurricane force winds. We spend $60 billion a year to maintain our nu nuclear arsenal. What if that $60 billion was spent towards your education, towards our health care, towards uh, better roads, towards safer bridges, towards a living wage for, for all people? That $60 billion is wasted on on weapons that are designed to never be used because if they're used, they could cause the destruction of everything we know of life on Earth. So we are here dedicated to the, the destruction or to the elimination of nuclear weapons. Right across the street here where EF Academy was when, I, when, when you were coming here is the United Nations. Up close to 200 countries are now gathered at the United Nations to meet to renegotiate the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. That treaty, there are nine, we nine countries that have nuclear weapons. Does anyone know? Can anyone name one? The United States. The United States. Oh, I told you, yes. Russia. Russia. China. Germany. Not Germany. You would think so, but no. Because France. France. Iran. Not Iran. They're, they're developing nuclear power. India. India. What neighbors India? Pakistan. Uh, what country doesn't admit that they have them, but they do? Israel. They're in the Middle East. Israel. Israel. Did we name them all? And North Korea. Uh, give yourselves a hand. I'd like to end, and then I, I want to pass it over to our, our uh, guest. But I'd like to end with a little uh, experiment in um, time. The clocks, uh, the, the history books say that the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima was dropped at 8.15 a.m. in the morning of August 6, 1945. All the clocks stopped at, at 8.16. What accounted for that 45 seconds? It was 45 seconds from the time the bomb was dropped until it exploded. It went down in a parachute. And so it went slowly so the planes could get away and so that it would be at a certain level where it could cause the maximum amount of damage. I want you to think of what you love about being alive. What people do you love? What places do you love? What foods make your taste buds dance? What music makes your heart sing? Think about all of the things that you love about being in the, the, the world today. And I'm going to have you close your eyes and imagine yourself at, in that place, eating that food, hearing that music, being with those people. I'm going to, when I say, when I ring this bell, I want you to close your eyes for 45 seconds. Just put yourself in that place.
for two of our guests here in that 45 seconds, their friends, their relatives, their world disappeared in those 45 seconds. Everything that you were imagining for them disappeared in those 45 seconds. But they lived, and they, through determination, through a love of life, through a greatness of spirit, they were able to transform that terrible experience into being here with you today. So I would like to welcome our guests. Will you please come up to the stage? And we will first be hearing from Chris. 